What's up guys, Manny from Motor Million and today is Dino Day. It's Dino Day guys, this bike's been serviced, RPM limits removed, I took the side panels off so that we have it ready for the dyno. I'm gonna tell you guys all about that. I'm not gonna spill the beans right now why the side panels have to be off for us to dyno this bike properly, but let's go load this into the truck and get some true horsepower numbers for a stock BMW M1000RR. Guys, here we're at the dyno. Paul's getting the bike ready, he's gonna warm it up and it's prediction time. BMW says it's 205 at the crank and the predictions that we're gonna say is at the wheel because that's what the dyno measures. I predict 187 wheel horsepower. No, 186 guys, not 187. I predict 186. What do you predict, Daniel? 182. 182 for Daniel. Her mom, what do you predict? Uh, 185. 185, and Michael? I would say, what did you say? You say 186? Yeah. Okay, I will go 186.5. Okay, and uh, we, I asked Paul, I told him my predictions, and Paul said that we're predicting way too low. But we'll see, dyno time, let's get it on there, let's see. And then we brought Michael's bike as the control bike. We know this bike did 208 on the wheel at this dyno on a cooler day. It's a very hot day today in Miami, it's middle of July, there's heat warnings all over the world. But that's why we brought this along, just to get a control bike on here, because we know what this bike did on this dyno. Let's put the M1000RR on there, let's get some stock numbers, and then we'll put this in to check our numbers. And guys, this is the little pulse reader. I don't know the exact technical name, but this is the device that will read the RPM of the bike because this connects to the ignition coil wire and that's how we get the proper RPM reading as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. It is warming up the bike, guys. Obviously, we just pulled it off the truck. We put it in there, they bring it to operating temperature, and they run the bike. That bike runs hard, guys. It's already at 225 on the dyno. I see 186.5. You say okay. 186. Yeah, but yeah. it's closer to. I, know, I would say close. like closer to 200. No, like it's stuck. It has cat and has everything, but there is no way it's gonna be a uh, stock. I think we could run it in second gear too, or it's too hot. Because second gear, uh, there is the high, highest restrictions, and the only thing we want to see is the difference when we're gonna flash it and put the new exhaust on it to okay. see the second gear, the difference of the removal of the restrictions. That's that cool for like ten yeah. minutes, you know? Yeah. Okay. That thing belches out a lot of okay. heat. Dude.
198. So what you guys, what's happened since? What you guys done since? Nothing. Nothing? Just rode it? Nothing. Different tires, different this, different that? No. Guys, we're back from the dyno. It was a pretty hot and humid day. We got some great numbers. So just as I thought, this bike was gonna be somewhere on the 180 horsepower mark at the rear wheel. It did 189.57, I believe, on the dyno. And I promised you guys, I was gonna tell you guys why we took the side panels off. But we also brought Michael Knight's bike along just to have as a control bike. We are a little shocked because Michael Knight's bike had done 208 on that dyno before. Today it did 198. There's a lot of things um, that could be happening with that. We still took an RPM reading off that bike as well when you dynoed it. And it could be that the tune might be out of whack or something else is wrong with the bike. We'll have to figure it out. That means we're gonna have to do another trip on the dyno when we start tuning this bike and changing the exhaust. So we'll be back on the dyno just to see what's going on with Michael Knight's bike. But we brought that bike along just to have it as a control bike. But mind you, I'm pretty happy with the numbers because it fits right where this bike is supposed to do a stock. I mean, this ended up being the control bike in this case because Michael's bike, if there's something's going on and the, today the readings are very low, it still doesn't make sense to be having an M1000 doubler that's completely stock within nine horsepowers to Michael Knight's bike with stage two and all the work that was done to it because forget about the numbers, that's a really quick bike. Uh, Michael's gone out with it. It's not something that I do, but you know, he's gone out with 6350 even. They've, they've roll raced that bike and that kind of shows the power of the bike when it's out there. It's a very quick bike. But let's get back to this and let me tell you guys why. When I told you guys in the beginning of this video that I prepped this bike to get run it on the dyno, I took the side panels off. And this is on the new bikes, guys. So it's on the K67 and K66 S1000RR and M1000RRs. On the older bikes, I don't know exactly where to pick up the RPM lead, but I know in this case, we have to take the right side panel off. And why is this? So there's a really good reason for this, guys. And this is kind of a taboo subject because don't forget, when you take a bike to a dyno, there's three people involved. There's the guy who is giving you the dyno time that you're paying for. There's the guy who tuned your bike and there is you who's paying for all this stuff and who owns the bike. What do you want? You want the most numbers, right? Because that's what makes you happy. And what do the other people want? Since you're their customer, they want you to be happy. So if their dyno reads high and you walk out of there, the dyno guy is happy because you're paying for that dyno time. And the, the tuner is happy because it's going to tell you, oh my goodness, how much power did your bike make? But I think there's a little more than that and this has not been discussed. I tried to do a little search to see if this has been actually talked about. I couldn't find any particular videos. And again, I'm not saying this is 100% correct. If you think I'm not correct, comment below. But there's science behind it, guys. You could fact check me if you want. So how do you calculate horsepower? Horsepower is calculated by torque and RPM. And when you go on a dyno, the dyno measures torque because it's spinning. And that becomes your variable. And I don't want to bore you guys to death, but just think about it. If you have one variable and one constant, the only thing that's going to change is your variable. You know that you've recorded that change. And what does a constant mean? Constant means something that you do that is, it's, it's like a measure that is perfect, right? So you go on a scale and that scale, if it's reading correctly, it's always going to read the same thing if you step on that scale. So going back to the horsepower thing, you want the constant to be your RPM because as I said, Horsepower equals torque times RPM divided by 5,252. So if you don't take a proper RPM reading off your bike, what you do is you go on a dyno, you calibrate the dyno to the RPM. What does that mean? It's not calibrating for the dyno of what it reads, but it, what it reads your RPM as. So it, it asks you to get on your bike and I don't know the exact numbers, but it goes like this. It's like go on 4,000 RPM and hold steady go on 5,000 RPM and hold steady and whatnot. It's impossible for you to hold your bike at a steady RPM over and over again. If you don't believe me, go try it, don't crash. And if you have a dyno, go try it on a dyno. And what happens then? So your RPM, which was supposed to be a constant, becomes a variable because even let's say you hit the perfect number today, what happens when you go back on the dyno next week or the day after, you gotta calibrate it again because 50 other bikes have run on that dyno 
and you gotta recalibrate it again. And I hope today your wrist is as steady as it was the day before that you were on the dyno. So you see where I'm getting at? So we have the side panel off to get a reading off the bike that stays as a constant. And what is that? It's your ignition coil that is firing your cylinders and you could get an RPM reading that's dead on with that ignition coil and the pulse reader that's connected to your dyno. And that's why I'm so crazy about it. If you watch the V4 SP2 video, we even made a harness because on that bike, the pulse reading is off from under the tank. You can't run the bike without a tank on a dyno. So we extended the cable so that we have access to it. In this case on the BMWs, it's right up here that you will connect it. You probably can't see it now, but you need to get some light in there. It's up in there and you connect that pulse reader that I showed you on the video guys that you get a reading off the bike so your RPM stays a constant. And the only thing that's changing is the torque, which is what the, the dyno is reading. And what's gonna change the torque on your bike? It's the mods that you do, it's the fuel that you put in the bike, and maybe the weather a little bit. But that's why we take the side panel off on the M1000RR to get a proper reading on the dyno. And I think if you guys are into this stuff, you should kind of put away all these number games that you do that you shouldn't say, hey, my bike made 200 horsepower at the wheel. It's within the relevance, sure, say it, but I think what we're looking at is we wanna see what it does before in the stock form and what it will do after so that we can see the percentage of change in the power that we did. That way we will know what the yield of all the modifications that we do to this bike is. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Until next time, guys, have a good one.